Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at controlling water, urea and the kidneys. So, osmotic regulation is the control of water levels and mineral salts within the blood. So, water levels and mineral salts in the blood are controlled to protect the cells by either stopping too much water from entering or leaving them. Right, effectively by osmosis. So if the concentration of water is the same inside and outside the cells, they will remain in the normal state. So if the water concentration is too high outside, water will enter the cells by osmosis, causing them to burst. So on the other hand, if water concentration is too low outside compared with the inside, then water will leave by osmosis, causing them to shrivel up, like you can see in the diagram. As you can see by the second diagram, if water enters it, then the cells will swell up and eventually burst open. So the digestion of proteins from the diet results in excess amino acids, which need to be excreted safely. So in the liver, these amino acids are deaminated to form ammonia. So ammonia is toxic, so it's immediately converted into urea for safe excretion. So once we've eaten our food, it's digestion by the body. So the digestion of proteins is broken down by the protease enzymes into amino acids in the stomach and the small intestines. So when excessive amounts of protein are eaten, the excess amino acids are digest from digestion proteins are transported to the liver from the small intestines. So the liver controls the amino acid concentration in the body is excess amino acids which need to be excreted safely. So the body is unable to store lots of proteins or store these amino acids from digestion. So the liver ammonia is formed by the deamination of amino acids, however it is highly toxic. So excess ammonia is converted into urea. So urea and water are then released from the liver cells into the bloodstream and transported to the kidneys where the blood is filtered and the urea is passed out of the body in the urine. So urine contains water, urea, salt and the system or the body system that is involved in controlling it is the renal system. So the renal system involves the kidneys. So the kidneys are where we're forming urea and we're filtering the blood. We've got the bladder. So waste is stored in the bladder before it's being removed. The urethra is the tube that carries urine from the kidneys to the bladder. The renal artery is the blood vessel which carries blood to the kidneys. Uh, from the liver where urea is formed and the renal vein so is a blood vessel with valve that transports blood back to the heart from the kidneys. So blood is transported to the kidneys through the renal artery. So the blood is filtered at high pressure and the kidney selectively reabsorbs any useful materials such as glucose, salt ions and water after it has been purified, the blood then returns back to the circulatory system through the renal vein. So the kidney produce urine and this helps maintain water balance. The urine is taken from the kidneys to the bladder by the urethras. So the blood stores the urine until you can go and uh, expel it. The urethras are tubes that carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder, whereas the urethra carries urine out of the body. It is worth knowing the difference between them. So which organ produces urine? It's the kidneys. Which organ stores urine? Bladder. Which organ gets rid of carbon dioxide? Is the lungs. Which organ helps control body temperature? That would be the skin. And which organ produces urea? That would be the liver. 
So each kidney contains over 1 million microscopic filtering units called nephrons. So each nephron is made of a tubule and is responsible for cleaning the blood by removing urea and excess water and mineral ions. The kidney works in a number of different stages. So stage one is filtration. So blood passes through the nephron inside the kidneys and is put under high pressure. So this means that all of the smaller molecules such as water are forced into the collecting ducts and move through the kidneys, whereas larger things such as red blood cells cannot pass through. The second stage is selective reabsorption. So having filtered out small essential molecules from the blood, the kidneys must reabsorb the molecules which are needed. So therefore the kidneys selectively reabsorb only these molecules which the body needs back into the bloodstream. So the reabsorbed molecules include things like glucose which was filtered out. So the water that the body needs to maintain a constant water level and other things such as mineral ions will move back into the blood. In stage three is the formation of urine. So the molecules that are not selectively reabsorbed will continue along the left front tubule as urine and eventually pass down into the bladder. So the amount and composition of urine flowing down the urethra change in the blood in the artery contains too much water. Describe these changes and explain how they take place. So the key things that you would need to talk about is the water is filtered from the blood, a smaller proportion is reabsorbed, so therefore you would end up with a larger volume of urine and the urine would be more dilute. So describe how the amount of water in the body is controlled by the kidneys or you need to be talking about the blood being filtered and water being selectively reabsorbed. So describe what happens to glucose and amino acids in the kidney. So they filter out to start off with, then reabsorbed back into the blood. What blood vessel leads away from the kidneys would be the renal artery. What blood vessel leads out of the kidney would be the renal vein. And where in the kidney does filtration take place would be the nephron. So the water content of the blood is controlled by a hormone called ADH, which stands for antidiuretic hormone. So different amounts of ADH are released into the bloodstream according to the concentration of blood plasma. So if a person has consumed a large volume of water and has not lost much of it as sweat, too much water might be detected in the blood plasma. So if this occurs, less ADH will be released, which results in less water being reabsorbed and a larger amount of that water ending up in the urine. So if a person becomes too hot and sweats a lot but doesn't drink enough water to replace what is lost, too little water might be detected in the blood plasma. So more ADH will be released which results in the water being reabsorbed and you end up with more concentrated urine with less water in it. Thanks for watching.